Hi, we're back for section three of 910 by Nora Raleigh Baskin. This section, again, has the setting at the top, so we're able to see the time and place where we are located in the story. And today we are still on September 10th, but it is now 1014 a.m. Pacific time, and our character is in Los Angeles, California. And so that means we are with Amy. Amy was the girl in the airport that Nahid thought looked so perfect. But we found out in that, that part of the story that Amy's life really isn't perfect. She's being uprooted from Chicago to Los Angeles. Uh, her mom is on a business trip in New York. She's starting school a week late. And she really feels unsure of herself. Let's see how she does at her first day of school. Amy had been too young to see the movie Clueless when it first came out in theaters but she had seen it several times since then, and she owned the videotape. It was one of her favorites, but it had never entered her mind that one day she'd be living in Los Angeles and going to a school that looked just like the one Cher Horowitz went to. But it did. It looked just like that school, right down to the sunshine and the sea of blonde hair. So if you've never seen the movie Clueless, this is a movie that takes place in the 90s and it's, uh, you know, teenagers in California uh, who are wealthy and they go to a high school that's gorgeous and it really does look like a movie set. It really doesn't look like a high school at all. Um, so this is where Amy has found herself and she feels a little uh, out of place right now. Why do we have to have lunch at 10 o'clock in the morning? A voice next to Amy was complaining. Amy turned to see who was talking. It was a girl about her age, which made sense since this was the seventh grade lunch period. But Amy wasn't hungry and she hadn't felt like negotiating the line or trying to figure out how to buy lunch and where to sit or with whom. And apparently no one else wanted to eat either since it looked like most everyone else was here in the front of the middle school, spread out over the lawns and steps instead of the cafeteria. The answer came, because some grade had to get the early lunch period. It's not that I want to eat their horrible lunch anyway, but this is ridiculous. Don't you have any sunscreen in your bag? The voices were coming from two girls who were sitting on the same stone wall Amy had found. It was under the shade of a large tree with droopy branches covered in beautiful purple flowers that gave off the most amazing scent, like real perfume. They definitely didn't have trees like this at Amy's school in Chicago, or girls like that. They looked like miniature grown-ups in perfect clothing with perfect haircuts and perfect skin. Amy looked down at the jeans, flouncy white blouse, and brand new sneakers that had seemed just fine this morning, but suddenly looked ridiculous. She looked like a baby. Oh, geez, what had she been thinking? If her mother had been home, they would have laid out her outfit the night before. They might even have gone shopping for something special. But as it was, most of her stuff was still packed in boxes, and her mother's trip to New York hadn't been expected when they made plans to stay an extra week for the bat mitzvah. Amy had had to leave her school, her house, her room, and all of her friends, including her best friend Lauren, who had sobbed and cried and made Amy a special memory book, which she held out in one hand, wiping her nose with the other. I'm not moving to outer space, Amy had said, but she could feel a flood of tears behind her own eyes, and now, looking at her new school, she wasn't sure she hadn't landed on the moon. Who are you? It was one of the girls sitting on the wall beside Amy, the one who wanted the sunscreen. Me? Amy pointed to herself. No, the girl behind you. And Amy turned around before she realized the girl was making fun of her. Amy had told her mother, I don't want to go to a new school. I'll never make friends. No, just kidding, the girl added quickly. Yes, you. You're new, aren't you? We heard we are getting a new girl in our class. I'm Vanessa. This is Bridget. The other girl leaned forward, smiled, and did a little wave thing. Maybe her mother was right. Give it a chance. 
I'm Amy, Amy said. Vanessa scooched closer along the wall and Bridget followed, like they were attached by an invisible rope. Where are you from? Why weren't you here last week when school started? Did you just move here? Vanessa asked in rapid fire succession. Amy didn't know which question to answer first. I had a bat mitzvah to go to over the weekend, so we just thought it would be easier to fly here after that, she said. She waited a beat, trying to think, and then added, from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Oh, cool, Vanessa went on. Why did you move? Is your dad in the movie business? Everyone out here is in the movie business or something related to the movie business. My dad is a screenwriter. Is that why you moved? She talked really fast. My dad is a script advisor, Bridget said quietly. Yeah, he works for Spyglass, Vanessa added. So what about your parents? Is that why you moved? Isn't it so cool? Amy hadn't thought it was cool at all. So this is kind of interesting because these girls, even though they're the same age as Amy, and even though an outsider might view them all as being, you know, pretty and well-dressed, um, she doesn't really feel a connection to them just yet, which is hard. The new Being the new person in school is definitely challenging. I wanted to point out Vanessa's statement here. Everyone out here is in the movie business or something related to the movie business. Is that entirely true? If you enter the state of California, do they not have bus drivers, taxi drivers, waiters, uh, chefs? Do they not have, uh, you know, personal trainers? Do they not have teachers? Uh, do they not have doctors? So this isn't a true statement. It's an exaggeration for effect, and we call that hyperbole. I don't think you can see that. It's H-Y-P-E-R-B-O-L-E. -E. Sorry about that. So she's being hyperbolic. She's exaggerating, but it seems like that's in fitting with her personality. She had begged her parents not to move, even going as far as leaving sticky notes all over the house in secret places that they would find over the course of days or weeks. The laundry room, the coffee cupboard, her dad's bike, her mom's box of hair color, but nothing worked. This was a big opportunity for her mom, a promotion. Her mom wasn't an actress or a director or a costume designer. She worked in finance for a company called Cancer Fitzgerald. And her dad was a math teacher, so he was interviewing at schools in the area. The idea was that this new job of her mom's would change their lives for the better. Now, I'm just going to point out Cantor Fitzgerald is a real life company. Okay, it's a financial firm. And uh, part of the reason Amy's mother probably had to go to New York was at this time, their headquarters was located in one of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center. It will make things easier, she'd heard her mom say, for all of us. No, Amy told the girls. We moved here for my mom. She's not in the movie business. She's in banking. When she said that, Amy could see their faces drop. Banking was boring. Vanessa was glancing off to the left. Bridget was already studying her nail polish. The thick scent of the tree blossoms was beginning to border on nauseating. But it's a really big job, Amy rushed on. It's so important that my dad doesn't even have a job. That didn't come out right, but it was too late. Vanessa's expression went from boredom to pity. Oh, I'm sorry. Your parents are getting divorced. I'm so sorry, Bridget piped up. No, I didn't say that, Amy blurted out. Vanessa was shaking her head. You didn't have to. That's the other thing about California. People move here just to get divorced. And the lunch period was over. So, interestingly... We have uh, Amy feeling like she doesn't really belong. And what we're seeing here is her second guessing herself. So she's on this page talking about, you know, what had she been thinking? You know, she's wearing, she looked like a baby. She's wearing these jeans and this blouse. And, you know, in reality, 
I'm sure she looks fine, but second guessing yourself is a very human thing to do. And it's details like that that make these characters feel real for us, even though they are a fictional part of the story. Um, additionally, we're watching these girls um, kind of jump to conclusions, right? Um, they seem to be very opinionated. They seem to be very outspoken. Um, you know, Vanessa is asking question after question after question, and Amy's kind of caught off guard by that. Um, we see the words of Amy's mom. Give it a chance, right? That's the advice mom gave. And uh, Amy is trying to take that good advice, but the problem is, is that these girls may not necessarily be the right girls to take that advice with. So uh, with that being said, you're going to want to head to your character chart. You may want to make some inferences. How is Amy feeling right now in this new location? And as far as the assumption that these girls made, that might be worth noting as well, that these girls who don't know Amy at all took a superficial listen to her story and kind of scared her with, uh, you know, a pretty rotten conclusion. So um, all these good things, all these wonderful details, they can go in your character chart at this time. Have a good one.